Hi, I am Kajer on two wheels and today we are at MJ Paiva again to test drive the T-Max 560. So, much quieter. Let's do it front to back from this perspective. Let's start with the usual, the tires, which are a much nicer for a scooter. 15 inch wheels with 120 width at the front, 100 at the rear. So big fat tires, even for a scooter. You now have full LED illumination, including the indicators, finally. The mirrors ha still have this very weird design, which is actually smart because this way, a car mirror will pass underneath and a van mirror will pass over it. Most of them. Not all, but it is a smart design. It, it looks silly, but it actually works pretty well. Now, before we go to the next section, would be this windscreen. This has the sport pack, and the sport pack includes this windscreen, which is a lot shorter, much more nicer looking, but a lot shorter. Has that, has this rear headrest, has the tail tidy, and that's about it. Actually, in the Portuguese video, I forgot to talk about the tail tidy. So, since this is adjustable, it's not that bad. It can go a lot higher. Other than that, on this particular bike, MJ Paiva also added some Gilles tooling um, brake levers, which are pretty nice, to be honest. I wasn't expecting these to be so nice. So, moving backwards. The instruments are the classical T-Max instruments. So you still have the classical dual needle uh, dashboard with speed on the left and RPM on the right. And you have a central LCD dash, uh, which is just black on white. It's actually quite readable. Moving slightly backward from that, you have your control station with all the buttons, which are a bit too many. You have the emergency cutoff switch. You have mode change, you have the hazard lights, you have stop start and then you have an off button because it's keyless system. You have a lock and parking mode button and then moving on to the left you have eight buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight extra buttons in addition to the indicators and the horn. These eight buttons do what? Trigger button on the rear changes what option you are going to change with these two buttons here. Amazingly, this is down and this is up. So this is down and this is up. It changes either the windscreen, moves it up or down, or you press the trigger and now it changes the settings here on the dash, or the heated grips, or the heated seat. I just don't like that this is inverted, but it's fine, it works. I'm used to planes where towards you means up and away means down. So that's why I always do this the wrong way around. But you have this setting here. This actually works pretty well. Then you have three extra buttons here, which are the cruise control. Just like a car, turn it on, turn it off, uh, set, reset, increase speed, lower speed, perfectly normal. Uh, low beams, high beams, the indicators and your horn. Sorry, my bad. Let's turn this off so this doesn't happen again. It is also idiot proof. Whenever you stop the bike and the engine turns off, it honks like you just heard to tell you, hey, idiot, you left the bike on. You have your Akapovic exhaust, which is also an extra on this bike. Jolly expensive, it gives it a much nicer look, saves a lot of weight and gives you just a little bit more performance. Forgot when I was moving backwards, there's a cubby hole here, which is more than big enough for a big cell phone for uh, my Galaxy S7 is there inside there swimming around and S20 is going to fit in here perfectly or the iPhone whatever the biggest model is it just fits here nice and easy and it has a 12 volt charger not a 5 volt not a USB it's a standard 12 volt charger in there so you can charge your phone with an adapter 5 volt might have seemed nicer but the 12 volt is more flexible so there's more stuff that you can plug in the seat has a wonderful, wonderful design. Seriously, just look at it. It's, it looks great. The whole bike looks absolutely fantastic. It is such a good looking bike. And then let's go to the party piece of this bike. And it is why this bike costs between 11 and a half and 13 and a half thousand euros, which is a mind blowing amount 
for a, for a scooter because this is not a scooter this is a mix between sport touring and scooter it's odds and yet it just works so why because there's an as you can see there's no suspension the normal scooter suspension normal dual shocks that are usually here it's gone but it's got a standard big fat proper single shock which is actually mounted here on the bottom part of the bike you lose a bit of space underneath the seat because of all of that that means everything else it's a big chunky thing so it has to move everything slightly up so you lose a bit of space here but it's still big and at the front not only have an adjustable for preload and rebound which is really odd considering this is a scooter scooters don't have that it has a full frontal suspension motorcycle style scooters usually have a short suspension at the front that usually ends about here this one has a long suspension suspension with which just like a motorcycle stops up here near the handlebars it's just like if you remove the plastics the suspension is a normal bike suspension and like i tested on the other one it really feels like that way it's it's really uncanny just how good this is on bad pavement and on good pavement it handles brilliantly the last one did let's see how this one handles okay the test track today we'll be going down and then up first the twisty bit now this is a scooter only it's not quite a scooter as i said before this is a sport scooter which is something that should never be uttered in the same sentence and i am pretty sure the engineer that suggested this at some long ago Yamaha meeting was laughed out of the room until the sales started flooding in because this was a really, really, this is a really popular scooter and I can just see why riding here it was just brilliant riding in town it was just brilliant riding slowly, brilliant Riding fast, let's check it out. But I would guess, hmm, brilliant, except sense. And nearly invisible sense. Sorry about the sun, but I can't really control celestial bodies yet. Good, nice, easy to those brakes. Nice and precise on entry. Look at this, just one turn. Now, like all scooters, it does have one disadvantage. Since you don't have engine brake, you have to brake for every single corner entry. So in that, it feels a kind, kind of like a car, which is accelerate, ready, Brake, release brakes, turn in, corner, 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 mid throttle, full throttle, and out we go. <laughs> but that's a scooter trait because of little to no engine braking, perfectly normal. What's not normal on this is just how stable this is at speed while cornering. And I'm going downhill, I hate doing this downhill. Puts a lot of weight on the front wheel. Even on this very large exit bump, which I hit at speed on purpose, the bike handled it perfectly, although I was shot out of the seat, which was a bit unpleasant. Which is the only thing, I'm always bitten bobbing and you'll see my head or at least the bike jumping around, but it's actually me. I'm actually jumping up and down on the seat. I would need a seat belt for this. Let's see, 60 kph and full throttle. Just see how fast this accelerates. 80, 100, 110, 120 and time to brake. So it is not a slow bike. You would look at a scooter and think, oh, this is so slow. <laughs> oh, you've never seen one of these in the hands of someone who knows how, what they're doing, unlike me. This 
Actual shame, an R6 ridden by a an average rider. A good rider on this will definitely shame an R6 here. Hell, even two similarly skilled riders, uh, the T-Max, will shame the R6 on this kind of road. It's cheating a bit because this kind of road is great for the R6, yes, but it's a bit too small for it. It requires a bit more space and here this is like fish in the water. So it will be glued to the R6's rear and will not let go. Maybe on the straights, but come the turns, it'll join it right back up. So this is a superbly fast scooter. Look how stable this is and the leans you can get and I'm so comfortable doing this. And I can full throttle exit because of huge amount of grip on the rear. And I have traction control, so if things start going weird, I know I'll be a bit saved. Although traction control is not like these latest generations are uh, tilt uh, controlled. Some of the later generation traction controls and ABSs actually activate differently when you're leaned over or not. On this one, this is not yet a thing, but although it is a sports scooter, it's, it doesn't require it yet. Would be nice to have. So you could do that in the rain. <laughs> but holy moly, this is one fast, fast bike. You forget it's a scooter, seriously. And I am not joking, on the other test ride, because I have test ridden a T-Max before, in case you don't know, the previous generation from this one, or was it the previous two generations from this one? The previous version, I nearly fell off it. And I don't mean crash it, no, no, I nearly fell off the bike during a corner, because I was so engrossed in it, I, and I was already leaning over like so, and so I leaned over a bit more and hooked my knee on the fuel tank which isn't a thing because this is a scooter. So suddenly I was like this, trying to lean over a little bit more, trying to hook my knee and there was nothing there. So I was like, whoa, hey, whoa, <laughs> hang on. I was nearly left behind from the scooter and that is the best accolades I can give to this bike. You forget you're riding a scooter. It's just that nice. That back there, my friends, was just awesome. Fun, fun, fun on the scooter, which makes it twice as fun because it should not be possible and yet here we are Is, okay, camera is still here <laughs> it's a scooter these things are supposed to be boring bl and bland and this is neither it looks great, it rides great I can even do this just because fun <laughs> oh, okay this pavement, <laughs> focus, focus, let's stop the fun, okay? Focus. Look at this suspension working on that car. Hey, dude. Okay, that's my alarm because I should be waking up at this time. Sorry about that. So, check it out how soft this is, even on this horrible, horrible cobblestone. It's actually coping better than many, many 17 inch proper bikes here. And it's a scooter, which is usually horrible on these, but not this one, this one just keeps on trucking. Here we go left and let's go on to the faster part of the test track. If you remember correctly, this was where I found that the X-Maxes were not good at it. And this is where non-sport bikes, look at this, 150, holy that's too fast. And I started braking way earlier than I usually do because I got scared. Look at that speed, that was amazing. saying the X Max is here did not quite work remember they wobbled a lot because they're designed to be uh, light and nimble 
in the city and then they become all wobbly on this kinds of speeds and roads it doesn't help that this road is very undulating it's not flat there's gaps and there's uh, patches and mends and it's all full of undulations it's a really it's a nice road but it's very poorly maintained at the moment it needs a resurface so it's great to test and this one just copes with that i'm a bit bobbing again on the seat keep jumping up and down the seat it's a very comfy seat but well i need a seat belt <laughs> But the bike itself eats these things and just keeps on going. I actually got the second camera there so you can see the suspension working. So you see that it's not actually flying around. But yeah, this takes the whole, it's a fast bike for a scooter out the window and says, no, this is a fast bike. It's an insult calling this thing a scooter. This is a motorcycle. This is a proper, proper motorcycle. You ride it like a motorcycle. You do motorcycle stuff on it. This is not just your usual lazy commuter that goes to from point A to B in comfort and with practicality. This does all of that at speed with a smile on your face. What a wonderful machine. And that's why it costs this, frankly, ridiculous amount of money. So, a sport scooter. Since it's a scooter, it has to do what a scooter does. And so, urban riding, it needs to be agile. It needs to cope with all these imperfections on these small, small local roads which are usually very damaged so let's see how it does wow this is nifty let's change it from sport into touring mode because that was a bit too aggressive for my tastes even for fast in city riding aggressive this is brilliant it's very light Light steering, a light bike, even though it weighs 220 kilograms, it's odd. You don't really feel that weight, you just wee! <laughs> it just goes where you want, that's fantastic, really fantastic. Look how comfortable I am instantly here, and just, you roll throttle and it just skips ahead, just jumps ahead, quickly, smoothly, safely, and then you come to a little corner, you bend it, and it just goes the way you want. It's awesome. That's a dead end over there. This is just about as urban as it can get. I know this is a bit of nearly a village instead of in-city commuting, but you get the point. Tight, confusing, accelerate, brake, left, right, constantly. And this just does everything just about brilliantly. It's still has the same uncanny ability that the previous one had that it's stiff but it's still very nice the suspension is brilliant it's impossible especially considering this is a scooter it just copes with this bad pavement and this is really bad pavement pretty damn well i'm trying to hit all the holes this was a bit harsher but it's still very comfortable very smooth and yet stable awesome and as i have shown even in city it is more than fast enough look at this weird intersection this is quite a steep uphill so i have to brake and stop okay if i release it starts sliding backwards immediately because this is quite a stiff uphill and left turn so throttle turn full throttle here we go it just catapults you out i'm already at 70 kph it's that fast so it's not a, a slouch it's a proper motorcycle even though it's only a european a2 class license with 35 kilowatts or 48 horsepower it honestly does not quite feel like that granted my not having ridden for nearly six months might have something to do with it but i doubt it because i have been riding the tracer every now and then 
I think Yamaha was lying when it said this had 35 kilowatts or 48 horsepower because it definitely feels like it has more most definitely feels like more and leaning this over even in an urban setting just look at this it just feels so nice it just feels stable and, and controlled and gives feedback I went over that little ridge there on, on the exit and I could feel the ridge it's it's a top-of-the-line urban not an urban commuter it's more like a, an urban racer because this can go really really fast ridiculously fast this is fast enough from the engine and so nimble that you can just eel your way across traffic like this the pillion is also quite comfortable here although the seat is quite wide so you have to open your legs a bit more than you'd expect the pillion in this has been tested Kajarina actually quite liked this seat she said this is an extraordinarily comfortable bike to ride two up there's a lot of room and she's sitting quite far away from me she's not sitting on top of me so she's she's got a, a bit of space for herself this hump in between the two seats is the spacing between the two two people so there's it's very roomy even for two up it is very roomy and handling wise you don't really notice a lot of difference which is quite astonishing since this is only a 48 horsepower motorcycle but you don't really see a, a ton of difference yes you lose agility that's normal but it's not catastrophic as you would expect on some smaller bikes but it's not it's it's fine really it is now about the mirrors remember i told you about the mirrors let's try to pass close by a car see goes over the mirror goes over the mirror and then goes like this goes over the mirror and this one also goes over the mirror see that's why these mirrors have this weird design and of course it has enough power to quickly overtake cars whenever you want like so and this is touring mode you can switch modes very easily just close the throttle press this button which is very handy it's just out of the way that you will not activate it by accident but it is just in place that you can do it easily without looking on purpose like so now it's sport now it's touring and there's a big T or a big S in the center of the center dash so it is unmistakable to know in which mode you are the difference though is not extreme it is a bit more different in S the throttle is a bit more snatchy and it responds a bit more instantly but it's not night and day it's more like you're in sport mode and you're driving along in, in town and you're thinking wow I'm really focusing on the accelerator because this is snatch oh sport mode and then all of that goes away I don't really feel a lot of change in actual performance but it's just the smoothness on the initial power delivery sport is a bit more aggressive and the tour is a bit more soft I would say 90% of riding will be done in tour mode because it works just fine fuel consumption is very nice I'm actually doing the average here 4.6 which is 0.2 below what Yamaha says and I've been doing a mix of everything and not really caring about that actually being a bit too aggressive so you can even lower that um, when I got it the average was 5.8 so someone has been riding fast <laughs> uh, the top speed of this is around 170 180 kph 170 but with any kind of slight downhill it will reach 180 and stay there so this is a properly fast scooter and it accelerates mightily fast and reaching 120 kph it keeps accelerating fast so you can overtake on the highway you're basically faster than 99 percent of cars out there it's completely retarded like this three to one full throttle here i go see one overtake and already went from 50 to 100 i did not want to go to 100 i just want to go to 80 <laughs> yes it is plenty fast 
Now we will test this windscreen on the highway and I'll be silent so you can hear the winds not only in the top position but in the lower position too With the windscreen down at 140 km per hour, or just under it, 139 let's say, there's too much wind on you. It physically pushes you back and is quite uncomfortable. With the windscreen up, not an issue. Just a bit of wind on their helmets. So, one of my pet peeves is always nighttime illumination on motorcycles. This one has full LED illumination. And once, as soon as you start riding at night, you notice how much of the road you can actually see. The camera, this and the front one, don't quite make it out. The front one will give you a pretty good sum up of what my eyes can see. So as you can see, the low beams are very, very noticeable on the roads. You can see where is my low beams and where is the city lights. Now let's go into high beams where there's a couple of reflexes down the road which look pretty funky but okay I guess it's something doesn't matter but way down range where it's important you've got a ton of light. These do seem to spread out the light quite well. Let's see when it's dark because LEDs usually have one big drawback. Because they are so powerful, they cannot, by law, sp uh, spill any light out. So, where it's LED illuminated, you can see everything. Where it's not, you cannot see anything at all. So, you don't dazzle, guys. Like, I just dazzled this guy with my low beams. Saw him complain. And that's the only issue with low beams, with the LED headlamps, is that usually then when you corner, you can't see where you're going, kind of like this. I can't see the road at all. So you have to constantly do this, but this is with all LEDs, and this one is actually a bit better than average. Come on, come on, move it. See just how bright this is? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, this melts faces. So you gotta do is when you corner, you go into high beams. And with high beams, look how far away this, this thing sees now. I can see everything. I can only see the road in front. I can see everything. Wow, these high beams are something else. Pretty, pretty nice, focused and long. And with high beams, you can't see where you are going. Let me show you again. But this is regular with all LED low beams. Ah, it's not that bad actually on this one. There's a slight, very slight light spillage, but it's not enough to ride at speed at night. Then again, you do not want to ride at speed at night. So it's now time to deliver. This is one of the few bikes where I really am sad to deliver it. It's, it's just great. It's an awesome scooter. In fact, calling this a scooter is a bit insulting. This is an actual, actual motorbike. It's awesome. This is the result of trying to create a sport scooter. Taking the feedback from the usual scooter, the usual feedback from scooters, which is it's too slow, it's too wobbly, it doesn't corner right, it's blah blah blah. We all know the, the trope. And then fixing all of that. So you put in proper motorcycle suspension, you get, get a great frame, you get great brakes, you get slightly fatter tires, and you get something like this. Of course, then you pile on all the equipment you might want. Cruise control, heated grips, heated seat, just the works, LED indicators, the keyless system, you just plunk everything in. 
and you end up with a fantastic motorcycle that costs a whopping 11.5 to 13.5 thousand euros. It's not too expensive. Yes, it is a lot of money, but it actually is not bad bang for buck. This is actually a pretty special motorcycle. There's a reason why this is nicknamed the queen of the maxi scooters, and there's a reason why any kind of sporty maxi scooter always relates to this, because this is an unbelievably good machine. Okay, Jorina, for example, loved it. She loved the spaciousness of the seat. While it doesn't quite look like it, this doesn't look very big. Actually, you're only sitting on this part. Visually, it doesn't look big, but it's actually gigantic. Because of this backrest, she would slide all the way back, sit here, and still have this space between us. Instead of riding glued to me, like on normal motorcycles, she could ride separate, comfortably. And it was awesome. She said it's a very comfortable seat. Even though your legs are a bit wider than you'd expect, it's a very wide bike. Come to think of it, it's not quite as wide as the previous one. I reached the ground a bit easier. But while it is a very wide bike, this is fantastically um, comfortable. It's one of the best sock seats we've tried. She loves it. She says it's the most comfortable bike she's ever ridden. Pillion. I really like the seat, it's very comfortable, it's stiff, it, I'm sure it's a gel seat, it, it really feels like it has some gel in it, in here, okay, um, and it's just a perfect all-rounder, perfectly built, plenty fast, this is way faster than you'd expect, seriously, you will not, if you ride this, you will not expect this to be just as fast, and I don't, I don't mean fast and straight line, because it is pretty fast and straight line, I mean in the twisties. You can keep up with anything on this. It's amazing. It's This is, and I don't like scooters, this is the one scooter that really made me fall in love with it. I can understand it being a practical scooter, like the X-Max, like all the others. I understand scooters. I understand that they can be, they are very good machines for a purpose. They just don't click with me. But yeah, I can review it. I understand it's good, it's practical, it's has to be nimble etc but this baby i fell in love with this one i really did and i'm really saddened to let it go so that's it cager out Um, let's see.